What's everyone saying? It's your boy Summon Explores back again. I'm here today outside East Croydon Station and in today's video I'm gonna be traveling on one of London's oddest rail journeys. My train's in a couple of minutes. We're gonna head inside, get on the train, just chill. I'm gonna tell you the story and we're gonna see what's like. Getting around London can be a bit of a faff sometimes, especially if you're not a seasoned user of the lovely transports for London's is. There's people out here who have lived in London their whole life and they don't even know that there's trams down this way. Over the last couple of decades, there have been numerous developments to improve radial travel in London. Sometimes the bank account might not be healthy enough for a cheeky trip via Zone 1. In 2007, London Overground came into existence, taking over the former Silverlink trains network, with it growing with extension to the East London line, and the subsequent formation of the orbital route around Inner London in 2012, the addition of the Lee Valley lines into Liverpool Street to the network in 2015, and the recent extension of the Goblin to Barking Riverside in 2022. The Overground has been a godsend for avoiding Zone 1, except for this one bit at Shoreditch High Street Ugh. and Euston. But there's not been much love given to this little service here, and I'll be travelling on it. Now, when you think about getting a train to Northwest London from here, you'd probably think of getting a Thames Inc train straight up into central London via London Bridge, Blackfriars and St Pancras International, then up to Northwest. Well, I'm heading to Northwest London, not on a Thames Inc, but on a Southern train, the 1410 Southern service to Watford Junction via Kensington Olympia. When you think of Southern, you might think Victoria Station, Brighton, Bognoregis, Croydon, the train to the place with trams. But you might need to start thinking about Wembley, Watford, and West Coast Mainline, WWW, CML. This service is not new, and I'll tell you more about it later on. Now it's time to head on, find a seat, and charge my phone because I forgot my portable charger at home. Pain. This service is running on a dual voltage variant of the Class 377 train, the Class 377-7, introduced in December 2014. So this train is much quieter than uh, the others that are passing through because this is leaving in about 10 minutes. It's going to Clapham Junction, all the stops up to there, but then there's other platforms that have other trains that are going earlier. This train is going up to Clapham Junction, diverging onto the overground line and then it's going through there up to Wilson Junction but doesn't stop at Wilson Junction, it goes round and then it heads onto the West Coast Main Line. Let's just say these seats are alright for a short trip, but anything longer than 45 minutes or so and your back is feeling crunchy. Note the long dangly bit to the north. It's not really southern, is it? But I'm tss. Junction. 
During the journey, it's interesting to hear what these trains sound like under different power supplies. For example, when you hear a Class 700 on third rail, it sounds very different compared to when it's on overhead lines. The train does get a bit busier here at Clapham Junction, even though we arrive on platform 16, which is on the opposite side of the station to where the more popular overground services leave. We're actually ending up here for nine minutes, and I'm guessing that's for pathing reasons. So off we go, heading to Imperial Wharf, our next stop. But our first task will be to head under the sheer number of tracks that separate us from the London Overground lines. Imperial Wharf is the newest station to open up on our route, opening in late 2009, serving nearby Chelsea Harbour and the Sands End area of Chelsea. There's also an Uber boat stop here as well. Check out my video! We then pass by the Chels, 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 Chelsea, 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 and meet up with the district line at West Brompton, which you could say is the closest our train gets to zone one. So close that you can feel the S slap in your face when you're on the train. This is also where we pass the side of the former Ells Court Exhibition Center, now home to a new housing development under construction. Lads, can, can you give me a house, please? And in we go into Kensington Olympia, which probably has the longest platform on this route. Kensington Olympia is known for being that district line station with barely any district line trains. There's a limited service on the district line here on weekdays and quite a few, you know, on the weekends. And there's a lot of history in this station here. It used to be the London station for the former British Rail Motor Rail which ran between 1955 and 1995. Motorrail was a network of rail services across the UK where you could room your car onto the train and travel along with it. Nowadays, the former Motorrail terminal is home to a car park for the Olympia Exhibition Centre next door, and it's also home to a car rental company. Now, since we're talking about history, these trains on our route have been in operation for much longer than you could probably believe. A service under British Rail and then subsequently under Virgin Trains Cross Country ran a service down from the West Coast Main Line onto the West London Line and down to Brighton until 2007. So that means you could have gone to, I don't know, Birmingham or Manchester from Brighton direct. And until High Speed 1 was fully completed into London St Pancras International in 2007, Class 373 Eurostar trains would travel from London Waterloo to North Pole Depot near Old Oak Common via the line through here. So when you think about the history of this Southern service, this service is actually a sort of revival of the old cross-country service, but it actually ended up running a much shorter version up until 2022, where it actually used to go up to Milton Keynes Central. Since 2022, most of the services have been cut down to Watford Junction, but there are a couple of services that extend up to Hemel Hempstead in the early and late parts of the day. Shepherd's Bush Station opened in 2008 on the site of the former Uxbridge Road Station at a time where the area is getting quite a major revamp and, you know, regeneration with the opening of Westfield London and just everything that was going on in Shepherd's Bush and White City. I've got a retro video of me at this station on this YouTube, you know. And here it's time for us to connect to the overhead wires and head on to the West Coast Main Line. But first we head on to this siding here and chill for a bit. You know, making sure that the pantograph is up and everything's all good. The train slowly trundles onto the West Coast Main Line, going through Halsden, Stonebridge Park, and around Wembley into City Depot and into Wembley Central, our first stop on the West Coast Main Line.
I'll say that Wembley Central and the National Rail side of the station has seen better days. It's not really inviting, is it? From other times I've been, I've seen that at the station entrance, the platforms are usually barricaded off until a few minutes before on arrival. Because, of course, you'll get a lot of fast trains just speeding through. From here, we basically act as if we're a twin of a Lunwa train. Next stop, Harrow and Wildstone, speed. And here we are at Watford Junction, Platform 10, one of the numerous bay platforms here, having avoided Zone 1, Central London. The place where your Oyster card starves from them high affairs. People will know all about the Overground, the Thames Link, and hopefully you know a little bit more about El Southern that doesn't stay south. It's time to see where I can go from here. From Watford Junction, an endless number of lovely destinations are in easy reach. Like the Harry Potter Studios, St Albans, Manchester, the Scottish Highlands. Or if you're feeling adventurous, Wolverhampton. But there's nothing like a journey to the nearest Tesco Express. That's my final destination today. Right, we're here at Watford Junction train back here is heading back to East Croydon in about half an hour. I'm not getting that train back. I'm going to go find myself a meal deal. If you like the video, make sure you drop a like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Drop a, a suggestion of what you want to see in the future. Check out the Patreon, Kofi, Instagram, Twitter. It's been your boy, Summer Explorers. I'll catch you in the next video. It's time for a Lucas Aid Sport. See you in a bit.